The Tudor period is known for being a time of great brutality and shocking executions as kings such as Henry VIII were reigning over England. Henry VIII is known for his six wives and two of them would lose their heads inside the Tower of London, which became a place of torture. Punishment was administered inside of England in a number of different ways, but during the Tudor times there was no police force. But the king or queen had a number of noblemen who were known as justices of the peace, and these were the ones who were responsible for making sure that the laws of the country were upheld inside their city or town. If not, trials could take place, and then significant punishment could be administered, with the most serious of crimes warranting execution. Join us today as we look at what punishment was like during the Tudor period, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. During the Tudor period, life was very difficult for those especially who were poor. They were often looked down upon, and they were often treated with disdain by the nobility. If someone did not have any land, they often had no way of earning or even feeding themselves, unless they stole or begged for money and food. But at the time, only disabled people were allowed by law to beg. With this, some people tried to make themselves look ill or disabled, so they would be allowed to beg for money. But there were people who were caught begging when they shouldn't have been, and the punishment for this was often execution by hanging, inside of town centres. But because of the desperation with the poor, there were a lot of thieves and pickpockets inside of towns in Tudor England, and this was a huge problem in London. To stop this, people went to lengths to keep their money safe, but thieves were known as cut purses, as they would cut the string off purses that people had. But at the time, serious punishments could include for stealing, losing a hand, and even branding with the letter T imprinted on the forehead. This was when a burning hot iron would be pressed onto the skin and would leave a mark. Some shopkeepers even placed bells on items to stop them being stolen. However, women inside of the Tudor period were targeted sometimes, and there was a fear of women being outspoken. For example, if a woman gossiped or slandered someone above their station, they were known to have been put inside of the skull's bridle, a cage-like device that was placed over the head. The tongue was often secured in this device so that women could not speak, and they were kept in this device sometimes for days on end, and it was to shame and humiliate the women, and sometimes husbands could even lead his wife around with a rope attached to the skull's bridle. But some women were also often accused of witchcraft and of being involved in the dark arts, and these women were often taken to rivers to be placed onto a dunking stool. This was a device which was a pulley that would lower women into the water. If a woman was innocent, it was said she would sink to the bottom of the water, but of course they would also drown. If found guilty, then a woman would float atop the water, and she would then be burned at the stake for witchcraft. The Tudor period was a time of great accusation, and these accusations were often incredibly dangerous. There were lots of punishments though that were aimed to humiliate and shame people in public. To deter people from being drunk, men were often placed inside of the drunkard's cloak, which was a barrel with holes cut for arms, legs and their head. They were then forced to walk around in public in the barrel, and it was hoped they would think twice about being drunk. But another common punishment inside Tudor towns and cities was the stocks or the pillory. These were both wooden devices which trapped someone inside of them. A criminal would be locked in the stocks by their feet, and then passers-by would throw rubbish, spit at them, and even throw rotten food for punishment with their crime. The pillory was where someone would be locked in by their heads, and somebody incredibly disliked and hated could have stones thrown at them, and this was of course very dangerous. Also, sometimes, ears were nailed into the pillory. Another common crime during the Tudor period was poaching, where someone was caught hunting an animal on someone else's land. If the accused was caught at night, someone was punishable by death for this, but if caught during the day, often punishments would be lesser. These crimes were committed due to the desperation of the time, and they were committed because some people had no other choice than to poach, as they were desperate and had no food or money. Elizabeth I tried to address the issues with the poor by her poor laws, but these ultimately did very little to sort out the problems. But the most serious of punishments dished out during the Tudor period was execution, 
and these different methods of execution were often linked to different crimes. One of the most serious crimes of the Tudor period was heresy, which was a religious crime. If someone dared to believe a different thing to the monarchy, and dared to question religion, they were often found guilty of heresy, and the Tudor period was a time of change where people for the first time in centuries questioned the Catholic Church. Henry VIII would break from Rome, and would change the face of English religion forever, but in England one queen became known for her burnings of heretics. Mary I became known as Bloody Mary, and she was the eldest daughter of Henry VIII, but she believed God had made her queen to punish heretics, and she believed at times that she had not punished them far enough. But Mary would order the executions of heretics by burning at the stake. This was considered a terrible ordeal for the victim, and it was one of the most shocking and serious of executions. Henry VIII and Elizabeth I also executed people by burning, and Henry executed Anne Askew, a woman linked to witchcraft, who was even wrapped inside the Tower of London, and she was burned. Burning was a harrowing thing for people to have seen, and sometimes to make the ordeal quicker, an executioner would tie a bag of gunpowder around the neck of the victim, so when the flames got higher, the ordeal would be over. One witness said of execution by burning, crying upon God for mercy, a man with a bill pulled the wood down, and when the flames arose he bent himself towards that side. At length the gunpowder was ignited, and then he ceased to move, burning on the other side and falling down at Mr Latimer's feet, over the chain that had hitherto supported him. Every eye shed tears at the afflicting sight of these sufferers, who were amongst the most distinguished persons of their time, in dignity, piety and public estimation. Executions that were carried out by acts were often done for people who were convicted of serious crimes, such as murder and treason. For treason offences, the other common sentence was hanging, drawing and quartering, which was believed to have been the worst death sentence. The different stages of this were barbaric, resulting in ultimately someone losing their heads, their insides and also their limbs being cut off and sent to four different corners of the kingdom. It was said of this sentence that, the greatest and most grievous punishment used in England for such as offend against the state, is drawing from the prison to the place of execution upon a hurdle or sled, where they are hanged till they be half dead, and then taken down and quartered alive. After that their members and bowels are cut from their bodies, and thrown into a fire, provided near hand, and within their own sight, even for the same purpose. Beheading by acts was considered fairer than hanging, drawing and quartering, and death sentences were often commuted to beheading, for more noble people who were close to royalty. For example, Thomas Cromwell, Sir Thomas More and Bishop John Fisher all lost their heads on Tower Hill by axe. High treason was a crime which was linked to the period, but it had a number of complex laws inside of the crime, including poisoning, which was said to have been treason. But the sentence for this was then boiling alive, with one cook during the reign of Henry VIII being boiled in front of a huge crowd. Also with treason, if a wife killed her husband, she was said to have been guilty of treason, as it was a crime against authority. But if a husband killed his wife, he was just tried for murder. Many members of the royalty, or nobility, could be accused and found guilty of a number of crimes, including sedition, spying, rebellion, alchemy and witchcraft. But many of these would result in death, as the nobles of the Tudor period were said to have contained too much power for leniency, to be shown against them. A crime which was committed by aristocracy often ended up in the court of the Star Chamber, set up by Henry VII to deal with criminal cases against nobles. But public executions were often reserved for the lower classes, and some people, including two of Henry VIII's wives, were allowed an execution in private within the walls of the Tower of London. But this often meant that the eyes of the lower classes were not allowed, but with these specific executions, there were hundreds of witnesses within the walls of the Tower. There were a huge number of crimes that someone during the Tudor period could be found guilty of, and they were punishable by a number of sentences for people. The poorer classes were often led to crimes by desperation, and the nobility could be turned to serious offences like treason, as they were obsessed with power. It was a time which became synonymous with execution, suffering and pain, with kings such as Henry VIII and Mary I inflicting severe justice onto people. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.